In 2023, the average new car sale price is right around $48,000. And that makes this, the 2024 Subaru Crosstrek, even more impressive considering for $24,000, you get all wheel drive practicality. But the question is, since there are plenty of economical cars for sale out there, why would you pay your hard earned money for this one specifically? And that's what we're gonna find out today by taking a look outside, inside, I'm gonna show you some of the features and technology that they pack into this. We're then gonna try and throw a bike in the back to see how practical it is. And most importantly, we're gonna take it out on the road to see what it's like to drive. Starting first with the exterior, well, it's very Subaru-esque. This doesn't even look to me like an all new car, even though it is built on their brand new platform, but this is after all the all new Crosstrek. And I think they knew their customer base, they knew what they liked, and this looks like a Subaru, just like the old ones. But that's not all bad. I would say it's not horrendously overstyled and or trying to make too much of a statement. And if there's something positive to be said about this exterior, it's really this alpine green paint. It's sort of a non-metallic forest green paint that actually really looks pretty good on this vehicle, if I'm honest. The sport trims get these accents all over the place. And then of course, they are now making the wilderness trim in the Subaru Crosstrek. So if you need even more ground clearance than this, this has 8.7, you can get the wilderness trim to achieve that. One of the things that I consistently see Subaru do that I personally enjoy is they don't seem to oversize the wheels on their cars. Now, on the base vehicle, you're getting 17 inch wheels. Here in the Sport and the Limited, you're getting 18s. And then rather funnily enough, on the Wilderness, they go back down to 17s. And the reason I like that they don't put massive wheels on their cars is because A, you get more sidewall, so it's better off road, which is certainly a focus for Subaru, but also with more sidewall, wall you're also getting a little bit of a better ride on road as well able to absorb some of those little nuances in the road as for tires we're rocking falcon zx tires in a 225 55 18 inch size under the hood is where things are pretty similar from a Subaru engine offering perspective. The base car gets a two liter naturally aspirated engine making 152 horsepower. The Sport and above like this one gets a 2.5 liter making 182 horsepower. Of course, this is really where a lot of the cost savings is coming from with this car. This is not a particularly advanced engine or it's not also particularly high output from a horsepower perspective. Now, in theory, you should be getting fairly decent fuel economy with these, with the two liter getting 27 and 34 city to highway. This car with the 2.5 at rated at 26 city and 33 highway. Over the 350 miles that I drove this car, I averaged 32 miles to the gallon. That involved about 70% highway and 30% city driving, but still pretty solid numbers for a full-time all-wheel drive car. Inside the Subaru Crosstrek, things are refreshingly familiar. They're not trying to be all crazy and quirky and do what a lot of manufacturers are doing where it's more of a form over function. This is a function over form cabin. What do I mean by that? Well, let's start with space. Excellent space, I'm 6'1", excellent headroom, enough space up here in the front and enough space in the back, which is quite rare for this segment. I could sit behind myself with plenty of leg room and also headroom, which is something that you can't say about a lot of vehicles in this segment. Outside of space, the visibility is excellent. Front, side, rear, you can see out of this vehicle. So many cars have these slanted, super aggressive roof lines and you can't see out of them. That's not a sexy thing, right? Like that's not a sexy marketing thing, but when you live with a car day in, day out, it's extremely important. And the rest of this stuff is just very usable because it's intuitive. So the only drawback I'll say, I think with this interior is this very large screen. It's a bit slow to respond and it takes a little bit to boot up but I can forgive it given everything else because you still get a physical volume knob, you still get physical buttons to increase or decrease the temperature in here, and also you get a physical toggle switch for the heated seats. This is something that was absent in the Outback Wilderness that I drove where you had to dig through a menu structure to 
turn on the heated seats. That was quite annoying. So everything else is quite usable and straightforward. A analog gauge cluster, like old school, nothing super digital. And then the other thing that's definitely worth mentioning is they're putting Subaru EyeSight in all of these standard, even the base model. And EyeSight is sort of that adaptive cruise control, lane centering. I believe it will also prevent you from trying to run over pedestrians at low speed. So that all comes standard, which is quite nice. So bravo to Subaru for getting this right, making this a usable cabin. Let's try to throw a bike in the back of this thing before we take it out on the road. I'm constantly impressed with Subaru's effective use of space, and the Crosstrek is no exception. This is my 29 inch road bike that I'm able to fit without taking off the front wheel. Even the CRV I drove recently, which is a full on SUV that is much larger, could not accomplish this. For sport and adventure lovers, which of course this car is designed for, you'll be very happy with the practicality of this car. Of course, if you like the bike test, make sure you're hitting the subscribe button below so you don't miss future videos. You know, it's funny, when you get in this vehicle, if you were to blindfold me and I could drive this somehow blindfolded, or I guess you black out all the badges, you black out the dash, so I can't really tell exactly what the vehicle is, but I just drove it and felt what the suspension felt like, what the engine feels like. It's just so Subaru. And I do mean that in a very good way because what they're doing in the suspension and dynamics department is excellent for this segment. You essentially have what is a super compliant, and comfortable ride that can go over all surfaces. And right now we're just kind of on the road with little undulations, no big deal for this thing. We're here in Colorado and in Colorado, there's no really below ground sewer system. It's all above ground. So because of that, they, they slope the driveways and streets in certain ways. So there can be a lot of undulations and steep driveways and things like that. This thing never bottoms out. Uh, you can hit them at speed. You can go over speed bumps at speed. It just doesn't care. This thing soaks up bumps so well. And it is my favorite part about all modern Subarus is that they tend to just do such a good job in the suspension category. And I guess in this segment specifically with the Crosstrek, when the Crosstrek, you're looking for something that can do some light off-roading or at least go down a dirt road because you're using this as sort of a lifestyle vehicle, right? You're using this to go hiking, you're using this to go on, on your trips or whatever it may be. And it just really excels at that. Not only does it have the suspension clearance to be able to do that, uh, the ride refinement is actually really great from a noise vibration harshness as well. So not only do we soak up the bumps, but I don't hear a whole lot of road noise. There's very little wind noise in this thing. And I'm actually really surprised given how relatively inexpensive this is. I mean, at close to $30,000, mid 20s to up uh, close to $30,000, it's not by any means a cheap vehicle. But when you start to look at other vehicles in this price range, it tends to offer a lot especially because it comes standard with, with all-wheel drive. But I'm able to drive this thing, and I've put 350 miles on it, I've taken it on road trips, and driven it around town. And like I said, for the money, it's just, it's just excellent. Super quiet on the highway, way quieter than I expected, and really lets you kind of enjoy a vehicle at a pretty cheap price um, because they've really sort of figured out this formula and they know who their customer base more specifically is with this car. Now, are there any drawbacks? Well, if I could think of one, it's this engine. Foot to the floor here. So this is the 2.5 liter and my recommendation, if you're gonna go and buy a Crosstrek, would be to at minimum get the 2.5 liter. So they offer two liter and a 2.5 liter. I guess it also depends on where you live. So we are at elevation here, about 5,500 feet, maybe close to 6,000 feet. 
And the reason that's important is because naturally aspirated engines are highly, highly affected by altitude. So this engine feels significantly down on power compared to what it would at something like sea level if you lived at sort of like a regular elevation. And it's just it just kind of struggles. You have to really get on it if you're going to get up like mountain passes and stuff like that. So I would not recommend the two liter in a place like Colorado, maybe areas of Utah, high elevation places. If you live at sea level, maybe you could get away with the two liter if you're somebody who doesn't mind a slower vehicle. But this thing a, a bit struggles and the fact that this 2.5 liter makes 30 more horsepower than the 2 liter I just can't imagine the 2 liter being really adequate at all uh, especially once again for this Colorado audience I know a lot of people in Colorado buy Subarus because I see them everywhere so it's something to keep in mind the engine is, is really where a lot of the cost savings is and that's really the biggest thing I can say is that we talk about how the ride is really good, it's really quiet, it has a lot of technology, so it's a lot for your money, and of course, they're willing to you know, sacrifice some of the, the cost at, at the engine's perspective, right? That's really where you're not getting the, uh, the latest and greatest in technology, but it is a naturally aspirated engine. It probably will be reliable, because Subarus, as long as you're not buying a sporty Subaru, uh, tend to be reliable. We all know about their um, engine issues with their WRXs and STIs of old. Even some of the BRZs have had issues. But when it comes to just the regular vehicles, their naturally aspirated engines tend to be pretty reliable. So I think it'll last. And I'm actually pretty impressed with the fuel economy. Let me check to see what we're up to now. 32 miles to the gallon, over 350 miles. That's pretty good. Uh, that's pretty good for an all-wheel drive vehicle of this size and admittedly I have done a lot of highway driving but I'd say it's probably 70-30 so in that sense the fuel economy is actually better than I expected for a full-time all-wheel drive vehicle and that full-time all-wheel drive is is really why you're buying this right because you want something you, maybe you live in a, a northern climate it snows you want something that's sure-footed with its all-wheel drive this this is it I mean for for a low sum of money uh, this is it now I've already talked a lot about the infotainment in the interior screen or in the interior segment but just to touch on a few things here with the technology itself having adaptive cruise control is very nice as it yells at me for lane departure that feature is a bit annoying I'm sure there's a way to turn it off I haven't figured it out but when it comes to the rest of the technology adaptive cruise control is great for uh, pacing the car in front of you and not having to keep resetting your cruise control. However, what I will say is that it is a little bit overreactive. So if the car in front of you slows a little bit, it tends to kind of jump on the brakes. So it's not the most refined experience, but I don't think anyone is sort of expecting that at this price range. And I think you're just happy to get those levels of features with this price range in general. So I won't complain too much about that. I've certainly got a little more used to the HVAC controls in here, although I still wish I had physical buttons. But at the same time, it is nice to have this big screen for the map. Uh, the, you know, just using it for navigation, it's very clear. Uh, with the big map, you can see, of course, more of the map and, and the road that's ahead of you. So I've enjoyed that. The stereo is pretty good. And like I mentioned before, it's it's pretty quiet. So this is actually a pretty big surprise uh, for me because you just sort of expect a more inexpensive car to feel cheaper. And this has a very solid feeling to it. Subarus tend to be pretty well made. No squeaks and rattles, uh, which is important. And also, you know, the the fuel economy is good. So from a, from a daily driver perspective, this is an excellent choice. I can see why so many people buy this. I see cross treks all over Colorado. And for a all year round vehicle that can haul all of your stuff, can fit my bike without taking off the front tire, which to me is a huge plus. This is just 
an, an excellent vehicle. And it also offers an experience that is very familiar. It, it's not too high in technology where you get in here and you don't know how to operate anything. Everything is, is pretty uh, intuitive and straightforward. So bravo to Subaru. Subaru. They're making a great product. They know who their customer base is with this thing. It's, it's quite apparent. And if you are that customer base, I think you're really gonna like this thing, especially in this color. Let me know what you think about the color below. I've had some friends that have given me some, some, some different thoughts on the color. I personally really like this army green and uh, they offer a bunch of other interesting colors in this car. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Appreciate you guys for watching as always and I'll see you on the next episode. Bye.